These six questions are really good lifelike example questions. They are they're looking at price changes and how much percentage change occurred in the price change. So six questions, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is indicated in red. Now question 18, it's very similar to, to earlier questions and actually not much harder, but it just has a bit of a worded, worded question aspect of it, so let's see how we can adapt here. We want to convert these, these prices as a, as a percentage, so at the moment my, my brother might earn like $12 and I earn $3 and I want to know what percentage of, of my brother's earnings per hour do I earn because at the moment I'm on slave labour. Uh, but um, this is just like a real life example. So convert as a percentage of three dollars out of of twelve dollars. So yeah. So just that scenario again. Just so we totally, my brother and I both earn as a total of twelve dollars, but I only earn the three dollars. So I want to see what percent of the total do I earn and how much he pockets. Okay. So the, actually, the easy way to do this is just convert straight away as a fraction, as this out of this. So this out of sign is pretty much division sign. We can go 3 out of 12. Right? Now it's a fraction, right? but we want to convert it as a percentage. Right? Now how do we convert this as a percentage? Well, there's a few different ways we can do this, but I'm going to try and... We're going to convert this fraction into a decimal first. Right? Because once it's a decimal, I can quite easily uh, convert it into a into a percentage just by doing a little decimal point conversion technique. So, one, 3 over 12, right, first thing I'm going to make it into its simplest form as a fraction. Well, 3 goes into 3 and 3 goes into 12. So I'm now going to write this as 1 over 4. Right? Now, 1 over 4 is the same as a quarter. Right? Or, or uh, 0 0.25 if you want decimal because there's, there's like a quarter of a cake or a quarter of a pie, and that's what's 0 0.25. If, if you times this quarter that I have by 4, you'll get a full cake. So if you times 0 0.25 by 4, we have a full cake. So the reason why I did this is it will make it seem a bit easier once we convert into a percentage by purely moving the decimal point two times and 25%. But you probably could have got to that step straight away by going, well, a quarter is the same as 25%. Or if I got a quarter of the of the marks right in my math test, you could go, I got 25%. But it might get a little bit hard, so that's why I just wanted to make sure uh, this step is, is doable. Okay? So, the second question here, uh, 44 out of 22, we'll go straight away and do this technique with the out of, meaning a division sign. So we'll go 44 out of 22. All right, well first let's let's convert this into its simplest form. Well 22 goes into to 44 two times and 22 goes into 22 one time. So actually we we simplify this down to 2. That's a decimal number or, or 2.0 if you want or but we want to put it into a percentage. So how do we put it as a percentage? Well we move the decimal point two times because we times by 100. So we move it two times and we get 200%. And that, that kind of makes sense because 200% would mean double. Right? And 44 is double of, of, of 22. So these are our, our two ways to convert real life like examples into percentages. I'm just going to mention at the end here that we might get some. Uh, we got a bit lucky because we had a 1 and a, and a 1 here. And the reason why I got lucky because uh, it actually works out to be a little bit easier. But just for a golden rule, if you ever have harder questions, uh, I'm just going to do this one quickly again up here. If you were to get maybe three out of seven. Uh, another way of doing it, which will work every time, is times in this fraction just by 100. Uh, so if we times it by 100, that's the same as 100 over 1. So we'll get 300 over 7. Uh, so we, we, well, when we times it by 100, we actually convert it into a percentage. So now this is a percentage. And the final step here is if you want to get it into a neat answer, like here and here, is you just simplify this fraction. So this one I might not get to a, a perfect answer, but I just pulled this one out of my hat here. So if you have a question in your, in your textbook, 
then just simplify this fraction. Whatever you get as your fraction here, or hopefully you get a neat number like this, will be your percentage answer. Okay, question 19. We want to find 10% of $360 or 37.5% oh, of 40 apples. So again, these are lifelike scenarios where we want to find uh, some information about things. But uh, this could be, I don't know, a house and you, you only need to have 10% of it to buy the house. So that's why we want to find what 10% is. Now, this is going to be easily solved by what we've done in the last few questions. Because when we convert to decimal numbers, uh, like to say 0 0.25, into a percentage, we only we times it by 100 or move the decimal point two times. So our answer was 25%. So what I'm, what I'm getting at here is the decimal number 1, uh, 1.0, 1.00, right? 1 that's just like saying I have one apple. We want to get that into a percentage, we times by 100, so we get 100. Right? So if we have a, a percentage right? and we want to convert it back to a, a decimal, right? we just uh, divide it by 100. So um, let's just use this step to, to solve the next two. We have... $360 and we want to find 10% of it. So what's the same as 10% as if you want to have it in a decimal form? Well, 10%, if we want it in decimal, we divide it by 100, right, opposite to, to put it into percentage form. So if we wanted to divide 10% into a decimal form by 100, we 0.1, or we move the decimal sign to a cross. Boom, boom. So now, if 10% of this well, that's like saying 0 0.1 times it. Okay, so that, that's what this 10% of, of, a, of a, some value, uh, that's how you comprehend it. Right? So 10% of this is saying well, 0 0.1 times it. Right? So now it's just 0 0.1 times $350. Now this step here, this one's a pretty easy one, but in case it wasn't 0 0.1, a little bit harder, we can use our calculator. So I'll bring our calculator in. You know, 0 0.1 times... 360 equals 36, and $36. So 10% of $360 is $36. Now that might have seemed easy, but it might be a bit harder like down here. So we'll use the same technique to, to solve what's 37.5% of 40 apples. So we have this th percentage of something. We want to make it a decimal times something. Now that, that's easier to do in our calculator. So how do we convert this into a decimal? Well, we divide by 100, right, opposite, if we're to what we were doing. So, boom, boom. That's the same as 0 0.375 as a decimal of okay, times 40. All right, get the calculator out. We can go 0 0.375 times 40. 15. So, 37.5% of 40 apples is 15 apples. And it's as easy as that. Question 20. Uh, we're working out what the original amount of, of some value uh, is when we're given some information. So in these two questions here, we have 10% of some original amount, which we don't know yet, uh, is $12. So the question is, what was the original amount? And the key to this question is, is, is we know that 10%, or they're going to give us some percentage, is some value, we want to know what 100% is, because that's what the original amount uh, actually means. The original amount is what 100% is. So, pretty much the golden rule here was we're, we're trying to get these percentages to 100. And whatever we do to that, we can we can do to this. It's almost like a mini, mini equals sign here. So, so how do we get 10% to 100%? We can just times it by 10. So if we times this by 10, 100% will be $12 times by 10. So 100% will be $120. So that is our original amount. Now that's a, a relatively easy one. So let's see if we can do one that's a little bit harder now. We know that 6% of some original amount is, is $42. All right? Now this isn't going to be as easy as here just to get to 100%. Remember that's our key to, to get our, getting our answer. So this is the step that I'm going to do. And we could have done up here... But uh, these, this will work every time if we have a harder question. 
We want, we want to get to 1% first, and it's always easy to get to 1% because we can just divide by whatever the number is. So if we have 6%, we can divide by 6. If this was 28%, we could just divide by 28. So if we do this step first, so 6% divided by 6, and we also divide this one by 6, we now know that 1% will equal, or 42 divided by 6 will be $7. Now the reason why I did this step first is that well, this will work every time, but once we know 1%, we can just times it by 100 to get 100%. Now, if we times this by 100, we times this by 100, so our answer will be $700. So, notice how this step here took a little bit longer than up here, but I do encourage that you use this little two-step method for all the questions, because then you'll be able to answer every single one of them. Question 21. So now we have these, these two values here. So we have $50 that is increased by 5%. And here we have 24.5 kilograms that is increased by 12%. So we have these initial values and we're increasing them by a certain percentage. So a little example is, is I, bought a, I bought a hat for $50, but I wanted to, to make a profit when I sold it to my brother. So I wanted to make a, a decent profit. So I increased it by 5% to when I sold it to him. Then I want to find out maybe what... What did I sell it to them? Okay, so um, let's do a technique here, which uh, I think I'm going to teach. That it might be different to your textbook, but it's going to work every time. So a little introduction. Remember when we had 100%, and this is a percentage number, that's the same as the number 1 in, in decimals, right? So um, this is like a little conversion here, and we did a lot of practice on how to convert from percentage to, to normal numbers. But the reason why I'm saying this is that if we want to increase $50, like this is its an original amount, so 100%, we want to increase it by 5%, the total price now can be just 105%. And if we want to convert what this 105% is uh, into a decimal number, right, well, we can just do what we did. We move the decimal point two back, or we divide by 100, or there's a few different ways to do it, but I'll use the decimal point. So if we use the decimal point, two to the left, we'll get a decimal number of 1.05. Now the reason I'm saying this is that this is the original amount and it's increased by this number. And when it's increased by this number, you can just multiply it by what this number which is increased by. So what I'm getting at there is that $50, you can multiply it by 1.05 to get our new value. So I'll get my calculator out, I'll go 50, multiplied by 1.05 equals $52.5, so or 50 cents. So I bought my hat for $50 and I sold it to my brother for $52.50, so I made a, a $2.50 profit there. Alright, this is the second question. Uh, now we have kilograms, so we have 24.5 and we want to increase it by 12%, so we'll use the same technique. This was initially 100%, right, just as an initial value. And we'll increase it by 12. So it's going to turn into now 112%, which, if we want to convert into a decimal number, is 1.12. Right, we're just moving the decimal point two to the left. So we want to go now 24.5, multiply this 1.12, and that's going to get us what our new value is. So again, we'll get our calculator out. We'll go 24.5 multiplied by 1.12, 27.44, and in this case, it's kilograms. So that is our new value when we increase this 24.5 by 12%. Question 22, now it's very similar to question 21 if you wanted to look back at the process, but I might go through this one a little bit more quickly, but it's the same process, but now we're decreasing initial value by a certain percentage, okay? so. Just an example here, $90, $90 and we, we decrease because it lost in value. It might be a car that, that lost 12.8% uh, in value. Uh, we want to know what that new value is after we decrease it by that percentage. Okay, so uh, this is the step we're going to use. Well, the initial value that we had, which is 24%, uh, 24 centimeters, we're decreasing it by 20%. Uh, so if we want to decrease by 20%, we're left with 80%. Now, what is 80%? This is that, that, that key golden rule we have to do. Is 80% as a decimal? Well, we can just move 
the decimal point 0.2 to the left, or divide by 100 in the calculator, is going to be 0 0.8. So, we have 24, and we can just go 24 multiplied by 0 0.8 to get our end answer. Alright, so we can use in our head, or we can just use our calculator here. Let's go 24 multiplied by 0.8 is 19.2. And depending on what the question is, in this case it's centimetres, make sure you put that at the end. So after we decreased 24 centimetres by 20%, we got 19.2 centimetres. Okay, same process here. Our initial 100% is $90, and we want to decrease it by 12.8. So if we want to minus 12.8%, so we're going to get 87.2%. Right? But now we need to convert this into a decimal number. So we can move the decimal point 0.2 to the left. We'll go 0 0.872. Now we just multiply this $90, our original, by this decimal number. That's going to give us our answer. So we can go 90 multiplied by 0 0.872, 78.48. Dollars. So that's how we, we decrease our original value by a certain percentage. Question 23. So we have an 800 meter, maybe it could be a race, that's increased to a 1200 meter race. And we want to find the percentage increase okay, of the race. So we want to know how much it was increased from 800 to, to 1200. And this is the, these are the steps to, to solve these questions. First step is to find the difference between what the original race length was and the final length of the race. And we can just do that by getting the, the end one and minusing it by the original. So 1200 metres minus 800 metres. But you could probably see there there was a 400 metre increase. Right. Now this is important because it's increased and maybe in future questions we might have a decrease. So Maybe have a think now what the sign could be if it was a decrease, but in this case it's a 400 meter increase. Now, to work out the percentage increase, all you have to do is find out what this actual meterage of, of increase is, 400, and we divide it by what the original race length was, 800 meters. Right. Now that we have our fraction, we can simplify this down. Well, 400 goes into 400 one time, and 400 goes into 800 two times. So we can write that as, as a half, or, or in decimals, 0 0.5. Uh, now, to find out the percentage increase, all we have to do is convert this into a percentage, and we can do that by multiplying it by 100, and putting a percent sign at the end. So, we want to multiply 0 0.5 by 100, we can go bump, bump, and we get... One, two, 50%. And there's our answer for how much the percentage of increase.